Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making four cards using the MFT Beeline to Your Heart stamp set illustrated by Genoblade. So I've stamped the images out with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock. So I've got multiple panels here and I'm going to be coloring them to match some pattern paper from the Cartabella Here, There, and Everywhere 6x6 pad. So I'm going to flip through and tear out a sheet to use as my color inspiration and tuck that under my cardstock panel and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my bears and I decided to go with some E50 shades for them. I'm going to use E53 E55 and E57 for their fur. So I'm starting with that E57 laying in some shadows at the base of the ear, up at the top of the head under that little hood for this first little guy, and then on the bottom of the arms, the sides of the belly, and the bottom of the feet. And then I'll start to blend out with the E55 just pulling that color out, making sure that I'm catching the edge of that E57 and scrubbing over that with this mid-tone to break up that dark line and just create a smoother blend. These are bears after all, so I do want them to look really soft and fuzzy, especially with the really sweet illustrated style that they're in. And then I'm gonna come in with my lightest shade, the E53, and I'll fill in any remaining white space except for the muzzle. I wanted the muzzle to be a slightly contrasting color. So we'll get to that in just a little bit. But for now, I'm just gonna continue coloring in the extra bears. And then I will also do the bears on the second panel, but I'll do those off screen to save some time in the video. And I did want to take a moment to mention that this is actually a part two. So I did a plan a card with me video recently where I started out showing you how I come up with my card concepts. And originally I was only going to come up with one card idea using this brand new stamp set or brand new to me stamp set. I had just gotten it in the mail and I was super excited to start coloring it up. And I planned out one card and I just wanted to keep going. So this ended up being a one set four ways video where I'm going to create four cards using one stamp set, which is another series on my channel that I used to do. I haven't done one in a while and I'll talk a little bit more about why in just a bit, but um, if you haven't seen the plan a card with me one, you might wanna go back and watch that first. You can watch them independently, but I did go through all of my decision-making processes for the supplies that I would be using. I am going to change things up just slightly as I get into the card, but um, I went through everything about how I choose the images, how I come up with a layout, what kind of pattern papers I want to use, what dyes I want to use, if I'm gonna bring in stencils, all of that stuff is gonna be in that plan a card with me video. So that will be the video before this on my channel if you wanna go back and watch that. If not, you can still watch this video independently of the other one. Um, but like I said, it will kind of spoil the plan a card with me video because you'll know by the end of this video what all my choices were. So anyway, um, if you're interested in that, I do have an entire plan a card with me playlist on my channel that you can check out that has the whole planning stages of each video and then also the finished card. So I'm gonna move on now to my honey stick. And the reason that I decided to go with the E50s for this particular card was because the E50s have such a wide range in them. And I'm able to do a lot of the images that I need to be brown just using the same family of colors and just switching up the tones. So I'm using E50, E51, and E53 for the honey stick. I'm also gonna use these for the muzzles of my bears just so they'll be slightly lighter. So a little E53 up at the top, blending out with the E51, and then using the E50 to fill in. 
And then I'll also keep the E50s and bring in back the E55 and the E57 from the bear, but add to that the E59, and I'm gonna use these for my tree branch on my second panel. And again, I'll only be coloring one of these kind of background images on screen, and then I'll do the rest off screen because this video would have been several hours long if I would have done all the coloring on screen. Even with shutting off the camera in between and doing all of the extra panels off screen, this video was well over an hour long originally, and I've really had to edit it down into a more manageable time frame so it wouldn't be too excessively long, and I hope that it isn't going to be too excessively long as it is, but I did think it was important to share the different steps with you all throughout the card making process. It definitely is much more time consuming to create four cards than it is to do one, especially when it's so coloring heavy and it has a lot of images on each card. I'm moving on to my B's now, and I'm going to use Y11, Y13, Y15, and Y17 for them. So I'm starting with the Y17 on this first B. I'm actually going to do the B's a little bit differently because I wanted to show you guys two different options. So one of the B's is going to have a yellow face and then skip every other stripe and the other bee is going to have a black face and then skip every other stripe. So just to give you two different looks and you can decide which way you like it the best. Um, but I started with the Y17, blended out with the Y15, then I brought in the Y13, and to be honest, I probably could have gotten away with just those three shades, but I decided to add a little extra lightness in the center of the face and stripes with that Y11. I'll also use the same combo on the bee costume that the little bear is wearing. And I decided to do the hood in yellow for both of those, just to keep it lighter around the face. I'm also going to color in the center of my flower with just the darkest three shades. Um, but I did throw in a little bit of that Y11 on the bear's costume just to kind of mimic the bees. So then I'm gonna pull in my second panel that has all of the flowers. And to keep it simple for today, because I was coloring so many <laughs> images, I decided to do all of the centers of the flowers in yellow. I will mix up the outer color, the color of the petals for each flower, but the centers are all going to be yellow to keep it simple. So all of the larger flower centers are going to be colored in with the Y13, Y15, and Y17, and the small centers were just the Y17. Then I'm going to do the honey, and I wanted that to be a bit different, so I brought in the YR27, and then I'm going to blend out with those same yellow shades. So it'll tie in nicely with the yellows that are already on the card, but it will give it like an extra pop and have that really nice golden look to it. And I really love how that combo turned out. This was my first time ever using it for honey and I really love how it turned out. I think that YR27 added so much depth to the combo and um, I really like how it played nicely with those golden yellow tones with the Y shades. So I wouldn't skip any of them in this combo. I would use all four because that Y13 also gave it such a beautiful glow, almost a translucence. So I uh, will definitely have to keep this combo in mind for any kind of honey in the future. So I did the honey that was dripping from the beehive and I'm also going to do the honey that is dripping over the pot and the inside of the pot as well. Again, just starting with that YR27, blending out with the Y17, then the Y15, and then the Y13. Next, I'm gonna move on to the black parts of my bees' bodies, and I decided to go with the toner grays for these. 
Uh, I just thought it was the closest match to that black of the pattern paper, which is not like a pure black. It's more of a really rich charcoal gray. I will say that I recently did Copic refills and I'm going to have a little accident here on this second B, which is unfortunate. I will fix it. There you can see what happened. Just a little bit of ink leaked out. As frustrating as that can be, the best thing to do is just to leave it and let it dry and come back and work on it later once the paper ha is not so saturated. So I will be able to fix it. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but it will look much better than it was. And to be honest, with this many images for this many cards, I just didn't have time to stamp out and color a new B. So I really need, was pressed for time and needed to continue. Um, if it had been like any other day and I was only working on one card, maybe I would have. Although I do like to try to save my images if possible. But uh, anyway, I'm starting with the T7 for those stripes, blending out with the T5. Then I use the T3 and then a little of the T1 in the center of the stripes and the center of the face just to keep it nice and light. If you color like a little black face on any kind of critter, it can really get lost and you don't see the features anymore and then you lose the cuteness factor, right? So I like to keep the face nice and light and especially when I'm coloring dark colored critters or, you know, black critters like bees or black bears or skunks, anything like that. So I did my black stripes on the bees costume that gave the... Um, black kind of splooge out the t7 splooge time to dry and now i'm coming back in with my colorless blender and just working that color back over the edge into the black space and i'm um, trying to bleach that black back out and i'm doing that in a couple thin layers and then letting it dry in between and i'll just keep coming back to it as i can the black that leaked outside of the body is actually a much quicker fix. I can just take a white gel pen and color right over that and it completely disappears. So uh, super simple. I'm going to move on to my bees wings. I'm going to use BG11 and BG10 for those. And I left a little bit of white space on the tip of each wing. I decided not to do the second bees wing just yet because I didn't want any of that black to bleach into the wing if I needed to continue pushing it back. So I just decided to move on to some of my flowers. I'm placing that BG10 closest to the center of the flower blending out toward the edges of the petal with the BG10, and again, leaving a bit of white space on the tips of the petals. Then I'll go back to that B and do another layer, trying to push that black over the edge back into the stripe where I wanted it to go. And I let that dry again. I probably should have done it a third time, but I just really needed to move on with the video. So I'm just going to color right over the yellow stripes where they used to be. And you can see it's like a little bit muddy there, but really not too bad. And I think in the final card, you don't even really notice it. So I'm moving on now to giving my critters some rosy cheeks using R22 and R20. When I need to, I will also blend out with the R11, depending on how light or dark the critters are. So I'm just putting that R22 down first, then blending over the edges with the R20, and then as I needed to, I did the R11. I'm also going to use these three shades to do one of the flowers or some of the flowers. I'm going to do this big flower that the bear in the center is holding. And again, I put the R22 toward the center of the flower. I'm going to do that for all of my flowers to keep them, again, just simple because I had so many to get to. And then blended out the edges with the R20 and then use the R11. I did go back in on that big one with the R22 right around the center just to darken that up. And then on my second panel, I'm just going to pick a couple that I want to be in this tone and blend them out the same way, just kind of working my way from the center out towards the tips of the petals. 
and filling them in as quick as possible because there was quite a lot to do. Then to pull in the corally red flowers from that pattern paper, I added R24 to that combo, took away the R11, and then I do a few more flowers, although I will say I would caution you to color a second panel on top of another one. I only did it because of the video and I only have so much screen space to work with and I didn't want to keep moving the back panel but I really should have because this is going to leak onto another one of my bees and I'm gonna have to fix it. And that gets really frustrating, especially when you're doing a video like this where there's just so much involved. Um, so it's better to just do one panel at a time or like not to do them on top of each other, you know, move them aside when you're working on the next one if you wanna go back and forth like I am because yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt to fix your mistakes. Uh, but sometimes when you're in a hurry, mistakes happen. So anyway, at least I was able to fix them all. So there you can see how that little bit of red got on my B, but I fixed that one off screen because you'd already seen me do the steps for the other B and it was the same exact process. I just had an easier time with it because it was lighter shades, but. I'm gonna move on now to those kind of blue-violet flowers in that pattern paper, and the closest combo I could get to with that was BV01, BV02, and BV04. So I am starting around the center with the BV04, and then I'll blend out with the BV02, and then use that BV01 to fill in the very tips of the petals. And I'm just picking different flowers on each of the panel. I tried not to do them the same. I wanted, you know, the flowers to have the colors appear in different parts of the scene. So if I did the big flower on the left in purple on one card, then I'd make sure to do it in pink on the next one, and then in red on the next one, and so on. Although one of the panels I uh, actually colored in just blue, white, and yellow because I'm gonna be using a piece of pattern paper from the same paper pad, but it didn't have all of the colors that the rest did. It was just in like a daisy print, which you'll see when we get towards the end, towards the pattern paper mixing. But also if you watch the plan with me video, you know which paper I'm talking about. So I'm moving on to my greens and I'm gonna use G40, G43, and G46 because the greens in those leaves on the pattern paper are kind of like a dull, desaturated green tone. So I wanted to match those. I didn't want to go with anything too vibrant. I didn't want to go too blue toned or too like yellow green tone. So I think this was a pretty good match for the greens that are in that pattern paper. For the tree, I started at the bottom and added the G46 and then blend it up with the G43. And for now, I'm just going right over all the leaves. I'll come back and add some detail to those in just a bit, but I just wanted to get my base layer down because there was a lot of green to color with the tree tops and the grass and all of the extra little leaves and then four panels of that. So I just wanted to get through it as quickly as possible. So I'm concentrating on the larger swaths of color first and then going back in to add the detail after. So that could be another tip for you guys if you're coloring multiple images at once and kind of just batch doing them and then creating cards later, or if you're mass producing cards or creating card sets like this one, um, is to just do like the larger sections first and then go back and add your details whenever possible. That way, you know, you're not like, getting too overwhelmed that you still have so much to go. Getting things blocked in with color really, really helps. So now I'm going back and doing all the leaves. For the leaves on the trees, I mainly just use the darkest two shades because the lighter color was already in them from coloring it 
um, the whole way but then for all of the additional leaves on the flowers I did add in all three shades so I just went through and quickly blended those out and then I'm going to turn that panel so that I can do the grass and I'm going to color that pretty much the same way as I did the treetop so it all matches so I'm putting that G46 down at the very bottom but then I'm also going to add it uh, here and there like to the little grass that is drawn in there and also to the bottom of the stems of the flowers so um, that one I kind of did all of it at once and didn't go back and do the details after but it was a little bit of a smaller section or it felt more manageable anyway because it's kind of broken up by the flowers that are in it so um, it wasn't quite as easy to just color blocked green because I had a lot of images to work around, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Whereas for the treetop, it was all going to be green except for just working around the branches. So I'm just filling in now with that G40, making sure that I've got everything nice and blended and going back over any edges that look a little bit blocky. I missed one of the stems there and forgot to color the rest of a second one. So I just went back and did that. And then for the beehive, I kept going back and forth on what colors I wanted to do it in, but I decided to go with a realistic kind of combo for beehives. Beehives are kind of this soft, warm gray tone. Um, so I am using W00, W1 with E70 and E71. So I use the E71 first to add a little bit of definition between the sections, blend it out with the E70 and then the W1 and then added a little W00 at the top of each little part for the highlight. And then for the honey pot, I also was going back and forth and decided to bring in some different blues. There aren't really any blues in this particular pattern paper that I'm using as my color inspiration, but there are in some of the other prints that I'll be using in this from the same paper pad. So I decided to tie those in and they were more of like a true blue than a aqua blue. So I decided to add that in for the honey pot. And then for the other stripes, I decided to go with purple again, just because I like blue and purple together. But I went a bit softer than the flowers. I used the BV quadruple zero with BV zero zero and BV01. So uh, I think that tied in nicely. And then I am going to go back and grab my black Sakura jelly roll pen to go over the eyes of all of my critters to make them nice and bright and shiny. It really makes a huge difference, especially on the darker critters like that bee um, with the black face, it makes a huge difference. So that finishes up all of the coloring. I will show you all of the different panels now, and then I will trim them all out with their matching dies. For my backgrounds, I've cut down four panels of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock with the second largest of the MFT A2 Stitch Rectangle Stacks Set 2. That's a mouthful. Um, and then I had two different stencils. I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. It was going to be either the cloud stencil or the rolling cloud stencil, both from MFT. I decided to go with the rolling cloud stencil for this one because I typically gravitate towards the other one and I just wanted to mix it up and use something different for today. So for the sky, I'm going to bring in two shades of Distress Oxide ink. I'm going to use Salvage Patina and then blend that out with some tumbled glass. Like I mentioned, the blue that is in that pattern paper is more of a true blue rather than an aqua blue. But because I had used some aqua blue on the bee's wings and some of the flowers, I wanted to tie those colors in with the sky. So I'm using both shades and I think that ended up looking really nice. It gives it a really soft, hazy look. So I'm just going to keep turning that stencil until I get a couple of cloud formations here until I feel like it's about to hit where I want my ground to be. 
and a lot of this background is going to be covered up anyway by the images so it didn't have to be too too perfect but I just wanted there to be um, you know flashes of it where it shows through around the images. Then I'm going to bring in a different stencil. This is going to be the MFT Drifts and Hills stencil. So if you watched my plan a card with me video, I was originally going to use some grass dyes for the ground, but I decided to simplify again, just because I was working through so many cards. And so I used this stencil instead, especially because the grass really isn't going to show much on these cards. And the colors that I'm using to blend on for the ground is um, Rustic Wilderness is the darker green and then Bundled Sage for the lighter green. And I think that matches really nicely with the greens that I used for the coloring and the greens that are in that pattern paper as well. So I'm just going to show you one of the backgrounds that is in the landscape orientation and one that is in the portrait orientation. I'll do one extra of each of these off screen. So I have a total of four panels because we planned out two cards in the landscape orientation and two in the portrait. So um, I'm just going to continue blending down this panel. I'm not gonna do any splatter detail like I normally do on this one just because I didn't wanna have to worry about the drying time. By this point, I was already losing the light. Um, because it's winter and yeah it just took so long to film this video so um, it was already starting to get dark outside and I knew that that was going to be a big problem with the lighting in my craft room since I film in front of a large window which is my main light source. So now I am working on my sentiments and here is where I also uh, mix it up a bit from the original designs and how I figured out which sentiment would fit was that I actually had to lay out my images and use them as a guideline to see what sentiments I could fit in the space that remained. So I'm going to again just show you two. I'll do one in the landscape orientation and one in the portrait. So I'm figuring out my sentiment placement and also the little bee trail. Um, because I wanted to stamp that directly on the card since there is not a matching die for it in this stamp set So I needed to stamp it directly on the card if I wanted to include it And I did like it because it adds a little bit of movement to the scene So I'm inking that up with Versafine Onyx Black ink and I am going to ink that up twice So it's nice and bold and clearly legible this ink lays really well over Distress Oxide inks, which is one of the main reasons that I love to use it. So this first one says, we have the sweetest friendship. And now I'll show you how I'm gonna do one in the portrait orientation. And again, I'm taking some images and lining those up so that I know what space I have left to work with. So you can see that the green is almost completely covered up down at the bottom. You only see a little bit around the edges, which is why I did want it on there, but I wasn't too worried about, you know, adding a lot of detail with the splatter. And then the clouds, you're only seeing a little bit as well, mainly on that left-hand side where our images are. So I lined up my sentiment and my bee trail and I knew that bee trail was going off the edge of the misty. So I wasn't sure how it was gonna stamp, but I decided to try it. Um, it didn't work, didn't work at all. I couldn't get the entire impression because that stamp was hindering the rest of this uh, sentiment from making contact with the card front. But that's the great thing about using this waffle flower grip mat is I'm able to move my panel around really easily. So I took off the bee trail, stamped the rest of my sentiment, and then just shifted that panel over in my misty. And that grip mat is really going to hold it in place. So I was able to stamp that bee trail off the edge where I wanted it. So while I have my Misty out, I want to stamp on the insides of my cards. For all four cards, I'm going to use Lawn Fawn Sticky Note cardstock, and I'm going to use Lawn Fawn Sunflower ink. I wish I had a bit of a darker yellow ink, so I did have to stamp this down four times to make sure it was clearly visible, because this ink does dry back a little bit, and so I just wanted to make sure that it would really show up. 
Um, and again, I'm going to show you just two. I'm going to do two, one in the landscape and one in the portrait because I did switch up which bee I used and which trail I used and I switched up the sentiment for each of the four cards. But I'll show you all of those at the end. For now, I'm going to go back to my Cartabella Here, There, and Everywhere paper pad and choose the pattern paper for each of my cards. So I'm going to use two prints on each card. I want a floral and then something that is a bit contrasting, more of a monochromatic print. So I'm just flipping through and picking out the ones that I want to use. Sometimes the um, coordinating paper is going to be on the back and then sometimes I pulled out an additional one. So like the daisy print, the coordinating paper is on the back. For that one I pulled out two. The black one also has a coordinating print on the back and then these two are going to be for the fourth card. So I've trimmed all of those down. The floral prints I trimmed down to be four and a quarter by five and a half to fit on the front of my A2 standard size card. So it's going to cover those up completely. The secondary print, the monochromatic one, I trimmed to be two and a quarter inches and then by either five and a half for the ones that are going on the landscape cards or four and a quarter for the ones that are going on the portrait cards. So I'm gonna put all four of those together so you can see how those are going. And again, I kept the design simple because uh, the focus was on the coloring. Those images were super duper cute. It took me a really long time to get them all colored up. So I wanted to keep the focus on that and um, kind of have the pattern paper be just more of a simple background element, but it's really gonna pull the color palette for all of these cards together. So I am just going to continue adding those on. Um, and I even use the part that has the little hole in the top because I wanted to utilize the entire piece of pattern paper and it's gonna be covered up by my focal panel anyway, so why not? So there is my last card with the floral print and then I'll add the little pink monochromatic polka dot across the center. So then I'm going to add on all of my focal panels and I've added foam tape to the back of all of those to give each of the cards a bit of definition. So I'm gonna peel off those release papers, make sure that they are centered on the card and then just pop them down into place. And again, I did show you all four, so you can kind of see that each of the sentiments is different, um, and the pattern papers are different, but the background is very similar. Um, I did do a little bit of different cloud formations, but it's not gonna be something that's very noticeable once all the images get on there. Um, but yeah, I kept them really similar, so I think that these would make a great card set if you wanted to gift them to someone at once because they all kind of tie in nicely together by those little bits and pieces that um, are similar. So now I'm ready to start putting these cards together, adding my images over top. So I'm gonna grab one of these little floral clusters with the honey pot, and then I'll grab one of the trees and I'll glue that down um, at the same time, I didn't want to press the ground piece down too firmly because I knew that the honey, um, the beehive, actually needed to tuck behind the flower a little bit to make it fit. So I did those kind of both together and then press them down. I'll add a bee at the top of the bee trail right above that sentiment, making sure that he is not covering up any part of it. And then choose a bear for this card. And again, this could be where I deviated a little bit from the original plan for each card. I did not go back and reference my photos to see which bear and which bee I had on each original design, simply because it was getting so dark in my craft room. It was really starting to um, get dim and I was afraid that the video quality was going to get really grainy and so I just really needed to hurry and get these done. Um, but I think they are pretty similar to the original designs and I'm glad that I did take those reference photos because it did help me with the layouts of things. 
Um, but like I said, they might not be exactly like the photo that I took, but I think each one of them turned out pretty close to that. So this was the one card that I did in the different color palette to match the pattern paper. Um, just using the blues and the yellows mainly and I really actually like how it turned out You guys will have to let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite. I like the colors too I think they are really beautiful and match beautifully with the pattern papers But there's something really peaceful about the blue and yellow that I just really like um, But yeah, so I'm moving on now to the portrait orientation and these ones fit together a little bit better the drip of the honey just falls right in between those flowers so again I did not press down firmly until I had both of those background images in place but uh, yeah I really really like this one as well I think the black bees look really cute I don't know if I like the black bees better or the yellow bees and by that I just mean the color of their face I like them both. I don't know. I think both of them work, but I thought with the black pattern paper that the black faced bees looked cuter. Um, it just kind of tied in nicely with that background pattern paper. For this one, I decided to do the flower bear and uh, that way I could take up a little bit more of the extra space around the sentiment because he's holding it up higher than any of the other images. And now we're on our last card. And of course my glue decided to get clogged so I had to grab the pin and just uh, push that down to uh, get that flowing again. And then of course I dripped a tiny little bit of glue right on one of the letters of that sentiment and I was not sure if that sentiment was dry yet because that ink takes a while. Whew, that was a little bit nerve-wracking but thankfully I was able to remove it carefully and uh, it didn't impede us being able to read the sentiment. Um, so now I'm adding my last little bee there, but I still have two bears left because one of the card ideas had two bears on it. So I'm just trying to decide which bear I want to add and I ended up liking the bear with the honey for that card. So I used the bear in the bee costume on the blue and yellow card because I had extra room on that one to be able to squeeze that extra image on, which I also think um, gave it a really cute look. But as a final touch, I decided to add a little bit of Stardust Stickles, but I am only adding it to the honey on each of the cards. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to the darkest shaded areas on anything where the honey appears. So on all of the cards, it will at least be on the beehive and the honey pot. But then the cards that have the bear with the honey wand will also have it on there. I thought about adding it to the centers of the flowers, but I just decided not to get too heavy handed with it. I probably should have added it to the bee's wings though. I think that would be really cute. I probably will go back and do that um, off screen. But anyway, that is going to finish up these cards. So I'm gonna show you each one up close and show you what's on the inside as well. Like I said, I used the two different bees twice um, but I tried to mix up the sentiment on the inside so it would kind of go with the sentiment on the outside So each one is different Definitely let me know down in the comments if one of these cards is your favorite I would love to know. I don't think I can choose. I really really like them all if you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate you guys, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love to hear from you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. All of the products I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up anything for yourself. And I'll also put up two more videos on screen right now in case you'd like to continue watching. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.